Our physical surroundings change many times in our lifetime, and with such a change comes a feeling of being off balance until we find our way again, until we feel at home with our new surroundings. You cannot imagine how happy I am to be with you today. The only thing I can think of that would make me any happier would be if one of you would come down here and give this talk for me, and I could go out and sit among you. Rex and I both feel that we have come home, that this is where we belong. It is about feeling at home and belonging I want, that I want to talk to you about these few minutes. Throughout your lives, you will probably live in many homes. I have lived in 20. However, I will tell you about only three of them, the places I lived during my four years at BYU. My memory of that space and time was awakened by an experience I had Friday morning as I jogged with Rex across parts of this campus. It was a beautiful, crisp morning with the sun just peeking over the mountains. I was full of energy and was determined to make it to three destinations, my BYU student homes. Heritage Halls, Knight Mangum Hall, and an apartment on 800 East, just a block, a block or so from Alexander's Print Shop, which was, in my time, a popular snack shop called Rowley's. My rundown memory lane was in reverse of the chronological order I just listed. Passing the site of the apartment where Rex and I lived as newlyweds, I was saddened to see that it had been torn down to make way for a condominium. Nevertheless, my nostalgia was undaunted. Dozens of feelings flooded over me as I remembered what it felt like to worry about getting good grades, writing papers, preparing dinners on a very small budget, and trying to decide to which law schools Rex should apply. At that point in our run, Rex had to leave me to attend an early morning meeting, so I continued on alone. A short distance from where our apartment had been, I came to the old Knight Mangum Hall, known to you as the Math Lab, which was my home for two years. It seemed only a short time ago that Rex picked me up there for our very first date. I can remember thinking, that it might also be our last. But that's another story for a different talk. <laughs> now I was running slightly uphill, and as I approached Heritage Halls, I watched students rushing almost frantically to get to their 8 o'clock classes on time. For some reason, watching you at this moment unlocked the floodgates for me. All of my emotions came pouring out. I could remember just how it felt to be a student during those first few weeks of school. I could remember feelings of appreciation, apprehension, inadequacy, frustration, homesickness, mixed with feelings of excitement, anticipation, eagerness, and joy. You see, I was a freshman when I lived at Heritage Halls. As I passed by Elsie Carroll Hall, my eyes were filled with warm tears as I remembered adjusting to roommates, attempting to manage my time, forcing myself to study in between classes and not stay up so late at night, and worrying whether I would have dates on Friday and Saturday nights. Thinking about all of this filled me with a strong desire to stop, to stop you in your rush to class and hug you and share some of my thoughts with you and maybe just offer a little bit of advice. Can you imagine how you would have felt if a tearful middle-aged woman in sweats and running shoes had done just that? So I resisted the urge. But today, now that I am standing here with your full attention and I have showered and dried my tears, I am going to tell you what I would have said then 
about home and belonging. In your quest to complete each semester, to get that degree, to find the perfect someone to love, to prepare for whatever is ahead, savor the rightness of this time in your life. Do what is right for you now. Feel at home and at peace along the path in your struggle to get where you are going. Let go of the summer as the beautiful fall approaches. Look forward to winter, but continue to enjoy the here and the now. At times in my life, I have spent too much time longing for things that I did not have. I wonder what it was like. I wonder why I was homesick as a freshman. Was it my house or my backyard patio? Was it my comfortable bed or my very own closet? Was it my friends that I was lonesome for or my family? I was probably missing all of these things. But what has taken me some time to realize is that my longing was for the comfort that comes from being in the right place at the right time, of knowing that I am where my Father in Heaven wants me to be. Our physical surroundings change many times in our lifetime, and with such a change comes a feeling of being off balance until we find our way again, until we feel at home with our new surroundings. If we are listening to the Spirit, we will surround ourselves with truth and goodness in each of our earthly homes, making the pathway to our ultimate heavenly home more direct and attainable. In Doctrine and Covenant section 84, the Lord promises, And the Spirit giveth light to every man that cometh unto the world, and the Spirit enlighteneth every man through the world that hearkeneth to the voice of the Spirit. And every one that hearkeneth to the voice of the Spirit cometh unto God, even the Father. Why is it so important for us to feel at home with that which is good and right? Our most important pursuit in this life is to live so that we may return to our heavenly home to once again live with our Heavenly Father. President Spencer W. w. Kimball told us that our first responsibility in this mortal life is to prepare to meet God. Why is it that we have warm feelings of home when we are in the right place at the right time? Perhaps this can best be explained by one of my favorite quotes from C.S. Lewis in Weight of Glory. He wrote, If we are made in heaven, the desire for our proper place will be already in us. Rex and I feel once again that we have come home. This is not what we had planned, and for the first time in my life a drastic change has not been accompanied by a major move to a faraway place. Thank goodness we will not be moving to home number 21. However, this very well could be the most important change in our lives. And once again is during my days in Carroll Hall, Knight Mangum, or 800 East, and so many times between then and now, it is important to feel at home in the sense we have been talking about, that what we are doing is right. And I know it is right, not planned nor anticipated, but right. Soon after Rex was asked to be president of BYU, we attended our first 18-stake fireside, where we were invited to sit on the stand. As I sat there looking out at the thousands of students before us, the most overwhelming feeling of peace came over me. It seemed to whisper, This is where you should be. This is where your Father in Heaven wants you to be. All of my doubts fled. I knew Rex felt this, too, as he reached over and took my hand 
and in the silent language of soulmates, our hearts were one. At that very moment, I wished that each one of you could feel what we were feeling, that in the rightness of your own moment in time, you could feel the reassuring whispering of the Spirit, that your Spirit would feel that you had come home to do what you were meant to do. It is my prayer that we will all strive to be in the right place at the right time, that we will live in harmony with the Spirit, which will take us step by step back to our ultimate home with our Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.